Hey everybody, this is James, and today we're going to take a look at how to make a better camera in your 2D platformer games. So, I have a very simple little setup here going on. Nice simple 2D platformer, this little guy can jump around. And I've got a very simple camera in place, which just follows my player, and when I get down to a certain level, it doesn't go down below zero, essentially. So, this is what you might have in your game. It's essentially this, a very basic camera, literally all it does is follow the player. But of course there's a couple of issues with this. While this will work perfectly fine, and you'll see this in a lot of games in general, you'll just have the camera centered on the player and that's just how it'll work. But there's better ways to do this and there's reasons that you also want to improve it. So for example, when it's just stuck to following the player like this, it can feel very rigid with what's going on in our little world here. And one other issue is that when you're running along in your game, Say you're running along to the side here and you're avoiding dangers. We've got a pretty zoomed out camera here, but if we were a little bit more zoomed in, if I was to go in here, let's say we'll go into like eight here. When you're a bit more zoomed in like this, when you're running ahead and dealing with any dangers or anything like that, uh, you have a big problem because you can only see what's ahead of you on half the screen. And that's a really big waste of space. Everything behind the player doesn't matter. Unless you have something in a specific level chasing after the player. If it's behind the player, there's really no reason to have all that space here. So really what you want to have is something like the camera, if I grab this guy here, a little bit more facing ahead like that. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few little things we can add in to make this feel nicer. So first thing is we don't wanna have our player locked into the center of the screen here. So let's go to our camera controller. I have a, just a very simple little thing set up here. As you can see, it's just following our player at a target point and it's moving and setting the camera to be that target point. To improve this even just a little bit, one really handy thing to do is rather than just going to that exact point, we can make the camera lerp to position. So it's gonna gradually move into position. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna add a public float move speed. That should be a small p. Then I'm going to down here, rather than saying the transform position is the target position, we're going to say transform position is vector tree dot lerp from wherever our transform position is to where our target point is. And how fast we get there is our move speed times time dot delta time. So that's going to be just quickly at uh, moving our camera. So let's just demonstrate this in action. We we'll dive back in here and after compiling we can play and oh I just realized I didn't set a value for our speed. Let's set this to actually set this to uh, tree. There we go. Play and then we should see the camera will follow along behind the player. You see it moved up into uh, this clamped position that I have set up. Uh, maybe we'll remove that clampingness from this for now just to make things work a bit more nicely just so we get a better idea of what's going on here so i'm just going to play this here and so now you can see the camera follows along behind the player so that's great but we've we've made the camera feel a bit nicer when we're moving for example when we're jumping up like that it feels a bit nicer but and as we're moving along it doesn't feel so rigid so it feels like it's a bit more reactive in the world but we've made our problem much worse, which is now, because the camera is following behind the player, the player's no longer in the center of the screen, there's now actually way more space behind the player than what we used to have. So we obviously don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a essentially an imaginary point that we're going to move the camera towards based on where the player is. So for that, let's dive back into our script. We're going to create two values here. We're going to create public float value for look ahead distance and I'm going to set that to be 5 by default and then look ahead speed which I'm going to set to be 3 so look ahead distance is going to be how far we'll make our camera move ahead of the player and then we have look ahead speed is going to be how fast we make this point move so let's just first of all deal with what happens if we just look ahead so for this, we're going to use a private float value that we'll call look offset. And then down here in our update, or late update is where we're doing all this camera stuff. What I'm going to do is check if the player is moving to the right, we're going to make it, make the camera zoom to the right a bit. And if we're moving to the left, we're going to make it zoom to the left a bit. 
So for that, I'm going to need a reference to the player as well. So I have a player controller script over here, which is this little guy. And this on this guy, I have a rigid body, and that's what's controlling my player moving from side to side. So I'm going to create a reference to that player. So public player controller that I'll call player. Fairly straightforward. Uh, oh no, I already have that reference written in. What am I talking about? I already have that for when I'm uh, targeting the player. So I'm going to say uh, if player dot the RB, which is my shortcut for the rigid body, which is attached to my player. If the velocity of that rigid body dot X value is greater than zero. So basically if we're moving to the right, so if the player is moving to the right, then we're going to say our look offset is equal to the look ahead distance. Then I'll do another if to do the opposite. So if, you know what, rather than typing it all out, let's copy this, paste it in down here, and we'll say if the x value is less than zero, then the look offset is going to be our minus look ahead distance. And then our transform position we're going to, I'm going to say our target point dot x. So that's the value that I'm using to make my camera move towards. The x value will now be whatever our player dot transform dot position dot x is plus the look offset. So I'm going to comment out the line up here, which is setting the x value previously, because you don't need to set it twice, obviously, in your script. Let this compile. We'll play. Oh, should this should work, shouldn't it? Yes. Uh, so now when I move to the right, you can see we start moving ahead. I can obviously adjust this value to make it be a lot higher for moving a little bit more. Let's say we put it up to eight. So we get a lot more of the screen ahead of the player. So now we can see any dangers that are encountering us along the way. And when we switch the other way, we do that as well. Okay, so that's great. That does work. But it also looks a bit of a harsh snap when we switch from side to side. You might be happy with this. That's perfectly fine. But I would really like to make that a bit smoother. So if we go back into our script, what we're going to do is our look offset here. When we're moving to the right, rather than just setting it to be this, we're going to make it move towards this value. So we're going to say the look offset is mat.f.lerp again with the look we're going to say the look offset value is where we start we want to go towards the look ahead distance and how fast we want it to get there is the look ahead speed value that we set up multiplied by whoa that's not uh, multiplied by time dot delta time there we go so I'll copy this line now and put it in here and this time we're going to say we're going to go towards the minus look ahead distance. So if I play, now when I move, you can see the camera starts moving towards there, but we don't get it instantly happening. We get a kind of more gradual switch between them. So now when we stop, if we change direction and just tap, it doesn't try and snap straight over there. We Instead, we get this kind of gradual movement. And it just feels nicer for the player, rather than having the camera jerking around all over the place unnecessarily. It does this kind of smooth... Uh, movement to it. Okay, so that's great. That's how we can make looking ahead work nicely. So we're, we've dealt with our camera on the horizontal axis, but what about the vertical axis? One thing that is, again, the camera right now on the vertical axis is perfectly fine. There's nothing too crazy with this. But one thing that can make jumps hard for people, especially when you're newer to platformer games, is the fact that the camera moves. And the fact that I go to jump to this height, but then the platform moves closer on the screen as I jump can be a little confusing for players. So what's a really good thing to do is to make it so that really your player only or your camera only moves when the player's on the ground. So that lets people have control of where platforms are relative on the screen. To what to where they are well not the, not have control but not have the platforms kind of zoom around unnecessarily and again it's a really easy thing to do all we need is back in our camera controller script i'm going to comment out the target point dot y here and i'm going to add a new if statement to say if player and on my player i have a bool variable here called is grounded and that is keeping track of whether he's on the ground so i'm using that to allow the player to jump and double jump and stuff like that but all i need to be aware of is that's a public bool 
So I can use that value and say if the player that is grounded, if he's on the ground, then we're allowed to move our camera. Then we can say target point dot y is equal to, well, I can just copy this whole line to be honest, is equal to this little bit here. So I can save that. Let's go back in here, let it compile. And now when I play, we'll see that if my player jumps, you can see it only cam the camera only moves when we jump up into the air. Um, so, or sorry, when we land on the ground. So right now I can see, okay, my platforms are all here. When I drop down, boom, that's when the camera locks into position. Now you could do the same thing for the horizontal camera as well. You could say that the horizontal position stuff cannot be set unless we're on the ground as well. We could move all of this stuff into there. And this is going to be a personal preference thing. I personally don't like that to apply to my games. Uh, but again, this is going to be a, a personal preference because I feel like when you do that, it's a bit too jarring. But instead, just doing it on one axis works really nicely. It actually makes your game feel a lot nicer uh, when you lock the vertical axis only. So let's just undo that one. Put that in there, save this and go back in here. So we got our positions locking nicely, but there is one minor problem with this, which is if I play this here, if I go up really high like this, let's get up to this high point here. And if I drop down, whoop, my player disappears off the bottom of the screen until I land on the ground. So obviously you don't want that. So what we need to do is add a couple of extra variables to our little script. At the top here, I'm going to add a private bool for is falling. So this is going to be, we're going to treat, keep track of if the player is falling and if they are, we'll make the camera always locked to their position on the Y axis. And we need to determine if they are falling and we'll say that they're falling if the player's position goes below a certain amount below the camera. And we'll keep track of that with a public float that we'll call uh, max vert offset, which I'm going to set to five by default. So basically all we'll do then is after we use the is grounded value here, we're just going to say if the transform that position that Y of the player, or sorry, of the camera minus the player that transformed that position that y so this basically gets us how far away the player is so if the player so let's imagine the camera is at what two on the y-axis if the player is at let's say minus two then it will say two minus minus two so that will become four so obviously the distance between them then is four and that's not quite far but if the player is at say minus four it's two minus minus four which is six so therefore, six is obviously greater than our vertical offset. So we're checking here, is this value greater than our max vert offset? And if it is, that means we must be falling because the camera's gone too far down, or the player's gone too far down. So is falling equals true. And then we're going to check in here, if we are falling, we want to set our target point dot y to be the player transform position like we had it here. So I'm just, going to, I'm just going to copy that, paste it in there. And then the final check we'll do is, hey, we, we're falling right now. We're following exactly where the player is. How do we stop falling happening? We'll just check if the player is on the ground. So if we are falling and the player is grounded, well, then the player is obviously no longer falling. So is falling equals false. So therefore, we'll return to the normal thing of only moving the camera vertically when the player jumps up. Okay, so let's just test that out. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but it does work really nicely for what we're doing here. So now if I do the same thing as I did before and climb up high here, up to these guys here. So now when I fall down, there we go. We get the camera following us along as we go. Let's try and fall all the way down to the ground. There we go. So we never lose sight of the player, uh, but you're also kind of encouraging the player not to do that because obviously when you do that, the player loses control of what they will potentially land on uh, because you want to be discouraging your players from jumping into blind jumps like that. And generally as a game design technique, you should never have your player falling down into blind jumps like that. It really, really doesn't make a game feel great.
there you go a couple of very simple improvements to make to your camera in your platformer game as you can see this only took about 10 or 15 minutes to apply but it really helps make your game feel a lot nicer thanks for watching i'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness and in the meantime keep being awesome